explore your outlet that would be great. David, with TigerNet.com, uh, you, you have some of the debuting tonight that uh, I think is going to be pretty special. How did that all come about with you being able to tell the story? Yeah, um, Kyle, part of our uh, creative team, and, and just that whole group had come to me with the idea and asked me if I'd be interested. Um, and I was quick to answer yes, just because, uh, first of all, my family is very, very important to me. Um, second of all, Weddington has, has been a place that um, has propelled me to get to where I am today. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So when he came to me about the idea, um, you know, had a couple schedule conflicts, things like that, but we figured out a way. Uh, Kyle does such a great job. I mean, literally, my family and I were in tears while while watching it. Um, just shows you, you know, how good it is. Um, so yeah, it's just very, very special. Definitely wanted to make it happen. And in that trailer, Amanda Poole with Lodge Fox out of Columbia. And in that trailer, you, or the teaser, you talked about how you don't do it to prove people wrong, but prove people right. What did you mean by that? Yeah, um, you know, I think that there's a misconception, um, especially with with me, that there's more people uh, that that doubt me and doubt my success and uh, where I'm headed in the future, um, but. At the end of the day, I've had so many people supporting me from day one. Um, you know, starting with my family, uh, starting with my brother, starting with um, you know all my grandparents, and really the town of Weddington. Um, I had very few people tell me that that I couldn't do it, uh, even when I didn't even believe that I could do it myself. Uh, you know, they were always behind me, rallying, and um, you know, just making me believe. So that's that's really what I meant by it. Just you know, don't focus on the negative. Don't focus on the the people who don't think you can make it there but uh you know rather do it do it for the ones who have thought you could the whole time well larry williams tigerlistry.com what's the feel with everybody on offense sort of back i mean obviously you went through the spring with the new system but so many guys were out can you just sort of tell us you know sort of the different feel now when you have a lot of the guys who are on the shelf i guess mostly receiver but also some on the offensive line who were out for the spring yeah, um, you know, I think the word's just excited. Everybody is excited. Um, you know, we've got potential to be really great, and there's no doubt about that with, with all the weapons and pieces we have, you know, starting with number two uh, at, at quarterback. I mean, he leads the offense. He leads this football team, um, and there's no better guy to do it. And then you talk about all the weapons and pieces we have around him, you know, the five five guys up front, um, you know, a couple fillers that we'll be able to throw in there um, and, and interchange will be great for us. Uh, some young receivers got to step up, no doubt. Um, you talk about me and, and Seven in the backfield. Uh, I don't think there's a, a better duo in the in the nation, um, you know, humbly. But uh, I, I see how hard we work every single day. And, and that's just what this offense is consisted of, is, is a bunch of guys who um, put their head down, they work. And, uh, you know, I just want to see us all reap the benefits in the fall. Um, but there's a lot more work that we have to do in order for, for that to happen. Um, and, and we got to play our best football at the end of the year, you know, and, and we got to continue to get better uh, all throughout the year. So we can just never be satisfied, and I, I think that's when you're going to see the best Clemson Tigers. Todd Summers, WSPA TV. Kind of playing off of that, do you feel like the explosive plays are back in this offense? Do you think Coach Riley helps bring that back? Last year, they were they were missing two years ago. They were certainly uh, not as prevalent as they have been in years past. Um, you know, I, I would say that, that Coach Riley has done a great job of coming in here and just um, a adding different components. Um, you know, he's he's thrown things in there, and he just honestly puts uh, puts the the weapons in a really good position to make plays. Um, and and we've done that uh, throughout the spring, um, throughout you know today we had a couple couple big bangers on the on the defense, which always puts a smile on your face, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I think he's done a great job of putting us in in, in great position um, to go out there and just make plays and, and honestly just have fun. Um, it's one of the most fun days I've I've had uh, being a Clemson Tiger uh, was today and just being out there. Um, so it's going to be a great year, I think. Will. Beth. Go ahead. Uh, Beth Wolf, Fox Carolina. Um, talking to your co other co your coaches, your teammates, they all use the word freedom when they talk about this offense. How have you seen that impact your teammates and, and you know the offense Will was talking about it like how great it feels to have that freedom certainly opens Kate up for stuff as well what have you seen in a response from your teammates with that piece of freedom 
Um, I think it just goes back to, once again, you know, Coach Riley putting us in, in great positions uh, to, to be successful. Um, all starts with number two, as you said. Uh, he has a lot of freedom out there to, to you know, check the play, to, to, you know, give a wide receiver a different route. You know, you know there's a lot of things that, that he can do on the field um, if, if he doesn't like the look. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I think when you give that freedom to two, only good things happen from it. You know, there's only benefit. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see how he's able to, you know, benefit from it. And then uh, everyone around him is going to do the same. So um, we just got to make successful plays and, and can't turn them into bad ones. Will Vandenborg, Clemson Insider. I want to ask you, uh, James Davis is now helping with you guys, coaching in, in the room. What is that like, that dynamic with him and CJ and their relationship? And how, how has that helped you guys so far? Yeah, it's great. Uh, you know, just the the couple of days that I've I've had with him, even today. You know, I'm out there. Um, you know, just just soaking it all in. And uh, you know, you talk about a, a dynamic duo. <laughs> you know, that that's it right there. Um, with with J Coach JD and, and Coach Spiller. Uh, so you know, they, they bring two different things to the table. Um, saw a little bit of energy out of out of Coach James Davis today, uh, which you know you don't get as much from from Coach Spiller. Uh, but you know, it's it's a, a great great mix. Um, you know, I, I honestly can't wait because I just love soaking up all the information that I can. Um, and, and you know, they're both willing to give a, a great deal of it. And they both have a great deal of knowledge. So, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to just continue to learn from him and, um, you know, for him to kind of take Phil I and the other running backs under his wing and, and just be able to give us a different perspective. Well, could you talk about can you talk about Jarvis Green and kind of um, what he adds to that room that you guys are in and maybe where his ceiling is, what potential you see in him just after day one here? Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really uh, excited for Jarvis and, and what he's been able to do up to this point. Um, you know, came in the summer and, and has just been all about his business. Uh, you know, there's no doubt on on uh, the goals that he's set and, and the actions that he's taking to, to get there. Um, you know, he does love to talk a little bit too much. <laughs> totally a joke. Um, I, I know everyone thinks that I'm really, really mean in here. That's all right, though. Um, no, I, I definitely get on the boys, especially Jarvis, but that's just because I see his potential and I see where he can really go. Um, you know, the kid is going to be special. Um, and I know that y'all laugh when I call him kids, too. It's just just how I say things. Um, but no, he really is going to be special. Him and Jay Haynes, uh, they've got great capabilities, great ability. And, um, you know, they just got to put their head down and work. You know, it's a, a lot of information with a, a new offense to, to be able to obtain and to be able to play at full speed. Um, but uh, both of those guys have, have great distances to go and um, you know I, I couldn't be more excited to uh, help younger guys out than those two. How familiar are you with the thunder and lightning from almost two decades ago and, and Coach Sweeney said today that maybe you and Phil could be kind of thunder and lightning 2.0. How much does that excite you? Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm very, very familiar with it. Um, I think there was a, a commercial. <laughs> wasn't there a commercial on it? On oh, like Thunder and Lightning? What was there with uh, Coach Spiller and, and JD back in the day with Thomas Austin? Maybe. Maybe. I, I, think, I think we've seen it. And uh, if y'all haven't, y'all need to check it out. Because <laughs> uh, that, that's how I became aware of it. Um, no, but like I said, just to have those two guys in the same room uh, is, is unbelievable. And, you know, Phil and I um, have, have been talking about it a lot recently. You know, we came in here our freshman year, and, and our goal was to be the best running back room in the country, to be the best, best two running backs in the country um, and you know we're, we're seeing it happen right before our eyes um, just the the work that we've put in and uh, you know just talking it into existence not only talking it but um, you know putting in the work and, and the action to get where we want to go um, so I love that dude to death I mean he's pushed me more than more than anybody um, on the field off the field um, in my journey with God uh, you know I could sit up here and uh, spew off 50,000 things that he's helped me become a better man with um, but yeah I just can't wait to to go the distance with him man and um, just continue to work continue to grind with him and, and just continue to push him as well in, in different ways. Is it wild to think of yourself in that conversation of thunder and lightning or is that exactly what you came here is that or was that always the vision? Yeah it's always the vision. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, uh, I can sit up here and say that confidently. I wouldn't say, you know, we used thunder and lightning exactly. Um, <laughs> but I think that um, we've always had that, that image in our mind. Um, and, and our work has gone along with it. Uh, and I think Phil will be the first one to tell you that, um, you know, we're almost polar opposites in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be very vocal. And, um, you know, I'm going to wear my emotions on my sleeve. Phil is the exact opposite in terms of um, he's a great leader, but he's, he's more within. And uh, he's going to be the guy that, you know, puts his arm around your shoulder and, and kind of helps you out where I'm going to be the one to, to push you and, and scream at you a little bit, you know, get, get you going on that end. Um, so, yeah, it's just something that we've always talked about, but, um, you know, an image that we've had in our mind forever. And, and now that it's coming to fruition, um, you know, I, I think there's no stopping for us. You know, we go out there, and, and today was one of the best days we've had um, in, in terms of, you know, just how we push one another and, and how we love one another and, and what we're capable of doing. Um, so I, I couldn't be more excited for, for our journey this year on the field and, uh, you know, off the field, just continue to grow that relationship. You talked about your fiery personality. Did you get too hot sometimes last year during games? Is that hard to manage, hard to sort of walk that line? Um, yeah, I, I, I would never say uh, I got I get too hot, you know, especially in, in lo looking at, at past interactions or, or you know what I've done in the past. Um, you know, all learning opportunities. I think that uh, you know I have to be more present and and understand who the audience is that's that's watching. You know, um, and and that's one of my my biggest uh, letdowns is just I've got to learn how to control it and when to control it. Um, and Coach Spiller has done a tremendous job of, of helping me with that um, because it's all great energy. You know, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you that it's it's all love for the game, and um, I just want to win. You know, that's all I want to do. I want to go out there and I want to win. Um, and and when that's not happening, or I I do something that that hurts us in in terms of winning, you know, that's when I get very very frustrated. Um, so just learning to channel all of that and and not dwell on the past, be able to use all of that. Good good energy, um, you know, to the future. And, and uh, that's really where I'm, I'm focusing. And, and uh, everybody's helped me, Coach Bill or Phil. Um, not, a, not a huge thing, but definitely something that I can continue to improve um, in, in football. John Blount would be first in career. So what does Coach Stoic tell you? And how has he helped you manage that emotion? Yeah, it's always being in my ear. Um, you know, you got to forget about Uno, got to forget about Uno, on to the next. You know, just a little talk like that. I, I usually don't uh, like when, when people are in my ear, especially when I'm in that mode. Um, but, you know, I've learned to just appreciate Coach Spiller always being there for me and, and just being able to hear his voice. Uh, I think it's because of just, you know, what he's been through and, and the experience that he has, you know, I, I know that it's it's coming, um, you know, with good intent, and I know that uh, I know I've got to listen to him because I've got the utmost respect for him and and where he's been um, and just all he's helped me do up to this point. Um, you know, my development as a running back, as a man, wouldn't wouldn't be close to where it is with without him, um, and and uh, you know, so it's just I I got to listen to him, and and he's he's almost always right. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, right? <laughs> I guess when is that gear? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, John. Oh, this is a random question, but uh, I think when Dominic Thomas was deadlifting 700 pounds, I think one of the things people noticed in that video was he like barking at him. Like, yeah. where, where does that come from in that moment? I mean, why do you get so worked up about stuff like that? I couldn't tell you, to be honest. You know, it's, it's literally, it's just like a different mode. Um, you know, I just, I get so pumped up. Yeah, yeah, I just believe it's what God put me on this earth to do, is to play the game of football and, and to just maximize everybody's potential, and including myself. Um, and, you know, sometimes I, I ask myself, is it, is it worth it? Is it, um, you know, is it truly worth it? Because I understand that it does hurt relationships and it does sometimes cause somebody to not know what your true intent is. Um, but it's just a part of me that, that I've learned to love. And um, I think whenever people 
look back at those instances where maybe they didn't understand where I was coming from or, or uh, kind of what my intentions were. I think they understand that I was truly just trying to get them um, to maximize theirs and uh, that it's just all out of love. I, I tell the running back guys every day because that's the, I'm hardest on them. You know, um, I'm hard on everybody, but, but those guys, I mean, I am very, very tough on them, and I'd be the first to admit that. But I tell them every single day it's because I love you guys to death, and I would do anything for y'all um, and I think that they truly do understand that um, and, and it's a great feeling but yeah just uh, just comes from a place within of, of love and, and ferociousness um, and just another side that, that I don't really know where it comes from um, I think it's the Holy Spirit just shining through me uh, which is why I have to learn how to redirect it sometimes and truly let the, the light shine you know Jeff Fowler would just say that about two years since NIL became a thing yeah, it's been tremendous for my family and I um, just to, to have the benefit of, um, you know, just profiting off my name, image, and likeness. Uh, I think the first thing that comes to mind is uh, Levine's Children's Hospital and the ability to be able to give back to them and, and help them. Uh, you know, they're very near and dear to my heart, very close with um, a lot of their colleagues and, and gotten a chance to uh, create relationships with the patients and, and their families. Um, so first of all, it's given me the ability to give back to them. And um, nothing puts more of a smile on my face than that. And then, uh, you know, just the ability to, to give back to my teammates, to, to go out there and also have, you know, individual benefit, um, be able to you know, do some things that I, I was not able to do p before, whether it's financially, whether it's, um, you know, relationships, uh, connecting with people. Um, it's just created such a great opportunity for my family and I. Um, so I'm very, very appreciative, very, very appreciative of Clemson University and, uh, you know, their willingness to, um, you know, help us and, and put us, um, brand us in, in a way that uh, gives us, you know, that, that oomph. <laughs> put the dollar sign behind it, right? So it's, it's always good. <laughs> well, uh, Abbo says that uh, Coach Riley brings a, an air of confidence to this offense. Like that's one of the biggest, I guess maybe the most important thing. What is that? Is that through his demeanor in your eyes, or is it just through the confidence of his offense working in practice? Or what is it that you how does that materialize? Yeah, I think there's uh, there's a, a bunch of things that go into it. I mean, number one, I mean, he's he's the number one offensive coordinator in the country, and um, you know, I think when everybody on this offense believes that, uh, it's hard not to have confidence in him and, and have confidence in the plays that he's calling and the positions he's he's putting us in. Um, you know, to to go behind that, I think uh, the success that that we've shown through the summer and um, you know today throughout the spring, uh, just the different perspectives that that we've had um, you know it's it's a good feeling and only confidence comes with that so I think we can continue to grow there's no doubt about that um, we can continue to learn his ways and and kind of get on the same page more and more um, but I think that's where the confidence com comes from is just knowing that that he's the best at his job and um, he's gonna put us in the b best position to win as um, you know he's already shown throughout the spring throughout the summer um, and uh, today uh, he, he's, he's definitely, um, <laughs> it, it's funny because he just flips a switch, right? And, and it's like he's got a very silly, goofy side. Um, but then when he flips that switch, he's very locked in as well. So um, I would say, you know, he's, he's got two different personalities. Um, and, and when he needs to lock in, he's very locked in. Um, but then he also likes to have fun and, and can always throw a joke out there that, that makes you smile on the field and, and kind of takes a little bit of the pressure and weight off. So that's great, too. Take one more before we go to Bear. Will Carmine Jimmy, Fox Carolina Sports. As far as these fun handshakes that you guys do after the stretching deal, where did that tradition come from, and what's your personal favorite <laughs> that you have? 
Yeah. Um, personally, I don't know where the tradition came from. I'm sure just one of the earlier um, teams started it. Uh, I know when I got here as a freshman, we, we had been doing it. Uh, so I just kind of had to make them with all the guys and, and make sure that I was a part of it. Um, but I definitely had to throw fills in there. Uh, you know, it's, it's one that we created freshman year and, um, you know, one that I think we'll probably have for the rest of our lives. Uh, and just that connection that we have with one another. Um, just doing it before always always gets me mentally locked in, focused, and like, hey, I'm out here doing this with you know my brothers. Um, so I'm just gonna go out there, smile, have fun, um, have some joy, and uh, just enjoy it. Awesome.